We're on to something on this show. Last night, I laid into Mitch McConnell big time. I was so upset and angry over that speech he gave on Saturday on the floor of the Senate, blasting President Trump so unfairly. It raised so many questions about Mitch McConnell, his integrity, his loyalty. And we spent uh, a good chunk talking about the swamp turtle last night. That's what we called him, the swamp turtle. Well, guess who agrees with us? The president of the United States just put out a lengthy statement about Mitch McConnell. You know, we can't read his tweets anymore, so he has to do it kind of the old-fashioned way, putting out lengthy statements through his office. This one is a doozy. Going to read it to you in full. It just came out. This is from the president of the United States, former Donald Trump. It goes like this. The Republican Party can never again be respected or strong with political leaders like Senator Mitch McConnell at its helm. Leaders in quotes. McConnell's dedication to business as usual, status quo policies, together with his lack of political insight, wisdom, skill and personality, has rapidly driven him from majority leader to minority leader and it will only get worse. The Democrats and Chuck Schumer play McConnell like a fiddle. They've never had it so good, and they want to keep it that way. We know our America First agenda is a winner, not McConnell's Beltway First agenda or Biden's America's Last agenda. In 2020, I received the most votes of any sitting president in history, almost 75 million. Every incumbent House Republican won for the first time in decades, and we flipped 15 seats almost costing Nancy Pelosi her job. Republicans won majorities in at least 59 of the 98 partisan legislative chambers, and the Democrats failed to flip a single legislative chamber from red to blue. And in Mitch's Senate, over the last two election cycles, I single-handedly saved at least 12 Senate seats, more than eight in the 2020 cycle alone. And then came the Georgia disaster, where we should have won both U.S. Senate seats, but McConnell matched the Democrat offer of $2,000 stimulus tax checks with $600. How does that work? It became the Democrats' principal advertisement, and a big winner for them it was. McConnell then put himself, one of the most unpopular politicians in the United States, into the advertisements. Many Republicans in Georgia voted Democrat or just didn't vote. But and because of their anguish and their inept governor, Brian Kemp, Secretary of State Brad Raffsenberger and the Republican Party for not doing its job on election integrity during the 2020 presidential race. It was a complete disaster in the election in Georgia and certain other swing states. McConnell did nothing and will never do what needs to be done in order to secure a fair and just electoral system in the future. He doesn't have what it takes, never did, and never will. My only regret is that McConnell begged for my strong support and endorsement before the great people of Kentucky in the 2020 election, and I gave it to him. He went from one point down to 20 points up and won. He quickly, or how quickly he forgets. Without my endorsement, McConnell would have lost and lost badly. Now his numbers are lower than ever before. He is destroying the Republican side of the Senate and in doing so, seriously hurting our country. Likewise, McConnell has no credibility on China because of his family's substantial Chinese business holdings. He does nothing on this tremendous economic and military threat. Mitch is a dour, sullen, and unsmiling political hack. And if Republican senators are going to stay with him, they will not win again. He will never do what needs to be done or what is right for our country. Where necessary and appropriate, I will back primary rivals who espouse making America great again and our policy of America first. We want brilliant, strong, thoughtful, and compassionate leadership. Almost none. Prior to the pandemic, we produced the greatest economy and jobs in the history of our country. And likewise, our economic recovery after COVID was the best in the world. 
We cut taxes and regulations, rebuilt our military, took care of our vets, became energy independent, built the wall and stopped the massive inflow of illegals into our country and so much more. And now illegals are pouring in. Pipelines are being stopped. Taxes will be going up and we will no longer be energy independent. This is a big moment for our country and we cannot let it pass by using third rate leaders to dictate our future. That from the office of the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Wow, huh? It's been a long time since we've heard from him, and it's good, actually, uh, to get that out there. I think he deserved to make that statement. Mitch did betray the president and may have betrayed much else as well. <sighs> All right. Reaction? Anybody? <laughs> Mitch McConnell has been in the Senate since the mid-1980s, 35 years or so. That's a long time. These guys, they get there and they stay there. These guys and these girls. Nancy Pelosi has been in the Congress since the 1980s. How about a commission on term limits? You know, they're probably going to have a commission on the January 6th situation. And I'm all for that. I want tough questions asked of Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell. Law enforcement on Capitol Hill ultimately reports to them. Why weren't they better prepared for the events of January 6th? But while we're having commissions, why don't we have a commission on term limits? Coast to coast, consistently, people have voted in favor of term limits. Yet Congress is somehow exempt. We've got term limits for mayors, for governors. Hey, for the president of the United States, why not for members of Congress? And here's an idea. They haven't put her on any committees. Let's make her in charge of the commission. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Those that are in charge have been here for decades. Decades. Do you know the average age of retirement? It's around 64, 65 years old in the private sector. But not here in Congress. They cling to power as long as they can because apparently it's addictive and they can't give it up. This is something that I just can't tolerate. I can't take it. And the American people are so sick of it. Damn right. Damn right. You know, Nancy Pelosi has been not only in elective office for a long time, but she's been in power for a very long time. Father was the mayor of Baltimore, I think. She ran in elite circles. Here's a picture of her with John F. Kennedy a long, long time ago. Do we have, there they are. Nancy Pelosi with John F. Kennedy. Did you ever see this? Um, from what I know, Marjorie Taylor Greene did not run in those kinds of circles. However, she was very good at business. She put together with her family a very strong business worth something like 20 to $50 million. So you know what? I actually think Marjorie Taylor Greene might be a better speaker than Nancy Pelosi. I know she's a better speaker than Nancy Pelosi. She can speak better. You see, we're approaching nearly $30 trillion in debt. As a successful business owner for over 20 years, if I ran my company the way this government runs and spends and wastes and puts us in debt with our own hard-earned tax dollars, I'd be out of business a long time ago and we'd be homeless on the streets. Pretty powerful, right? How about Nancy talking about the issues? Republicans wrote a bill that abandons farmers, uh, f uh, fam farming families. It weakens, weakens the farmers' safety net. President Trump's month month months delayed speech on prescription drugs, fighting to expand the, uh, the possibility. Uh, Tuesday was a great night for us. No contest, right? Sorry, Nancy, but... Maybe it's time to retire. A lot of these folks should look at retiring decades and decades and decades. Republicans and Democrats alike. This is Don Young, congressman from Alaska. He's been there since 1973. That's a very, very long time. And it's not just, um, you know, older folks who want to stay there. Young Turks as well, like this Adam Kinzinger, a Republican in name only. He's 42 years old. And he's already into his fifth term in the United States Congress, okay? He likes being there. He seems to like the limelight because I can't figure out any principle he stands for. President Trump may have had, let's face it, a bit of an eccentric style. 
But his core beliefs, conservative judges, pro-life, those are bedrock Republican issues. Why would Adam Kinzinger betray someone who espoused bedrock Republican issues? It's a good question. And his family's been asking that. Did you hear about this letter? Let's put it up on the screen. His family sent him a letter, extended family, cousins, that kind of thing. We thought you were smart enough to see how the left is brainwashing so many so-called good people, including yourself and many other GOP members. You have even fallen for their socialism ideals. So, so sad. President Trump is not perfect, but neither are you. To embrace a party that believes in abortion and socialism is the ultimate sin. Wow. Oh, and then they, they write on. You should be very proud that you have lost the respect of Lou Dobbs, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, Greg Kelly, etc. And most importantly, in our book, Mark Levin and Rush Limbaugh and us. You should be very proud. I think they were being rather sarcastic there. And I understand. I understand. All right. In Washington, D.C. right now, we've got a villain and we've got a hero. It colors everything they do and everything the media reports. The villain is Donald Trump, still, even though he's no longer president. The hero is Joe Biden. Everything he does is great. Anything that happens that's bad is either Trump's fault or they'll just ignore it. Here's one small example. It's an inside the Beltway story to be sure, but how it was played in the Beltway is interesting. Here, this guy, Ducklow, he was the deputy press secretary to... Uh, uh, Jen Psyche. Anyway, Ducklow said something really stupid. Some reporter called him up asking about who he was dating. It was a female reporter. This is what Ducklow told her. Let's put this statement up. I will destroy you if you keep asking these questions. You just don't do that. I mean, and by the way, this guy is going to destroy somebody. All right. That was fake news right there. Um, he ultimately had to resign it was a big story in its own way inside the Beltway, all right? Those political shows, they love this kind of stuff. But this is a bad news story for Biden. And none of the Sunday shows, the big ones, covered any of this situation. Isn't that wild? Not a disastrous story for Joe Biden, but a negative one. And they just blew it off. That's the way it's going to be. There's a villain and then there's a hero, all right? But isn't it weird? that the villain is Donald Trump and the hero is President Biden, career politician, got there in 1972. Do Americans tend to like those people? In poll after poll after poll, we're told they don't. They don't like career politicians, yet they gave him the ultimate job, huh? There's Joe Biden in 1972. Where was Donald Trump at that time? He was building. He was creating things. It's one of the reasons why the swamp could never figure him out.